For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future, peace. Jeremiah 29, 11, that's always been one of my favorite verses. Nothing to do with me being named after the prophet of Jeremiah, but everything to do with what it means. And when I first heard that, I heard one of the other translations, the NIV. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and that gives a whole different uh, intimation of what it means. It gives a worldly connotation of what prosper means, which means to prosper financially and of worldly goods, but not for peace, not for hope, which is something that transcends this world and has you focusing on the peace of God, which is of his kingdom, not of this world. And it's one of one of the many nuanced changes in scripture that can also allude to a different meaning, a more worldly, secular meaning, which takes you away from the hope that is in Jesus Christ that is out of this world and puts your hopes in things of this world that religion promises those who come to Jesus. There's a prosperity message in a lot of rewritten gospels that puts what you can get from Jesus above getting the hope and peace of Jesus. And that was the first verse that I ever realized, wow, that's a big difference when you read, I can give you, or I have plans to give you hope and a future rather than plans to prosper you. And once you see that and your eyes start opening, when you're in the word of God, you start realizing there's a lot of subtle changes within translations that if you're seeking truth, if you're seeking God, the Holy Spirit will still minister truth to you and it'll still draw you closer to him and ultimately draw you into a heart of forgiveness for those around you because we don't all have perfect discernment on many different things. So it's are you truly seeking the heart of God, which will ultimately lead you to the cross, which will lead you to a place of sacrifice and being willing to give up the things in this world that from this passage may have you thinking that you are going to prosper in this world and get all of the things that you want that bring yourself happiness, but may leave others in the dust. When you're truly reading this passage properly, it's you're going to take hope and peace in the Lord, regardless of your worldly circumstances, regardless if you have all of the things that you want in this world that outsiders would look on as prospering in the way many interpret this verse. So, I pray that all of you are seeking the Lord and that his hope for a future and the peace that he provides will be enough even in the darkest circumstances because this world is only getting darker, but the hope of the Lord has been there eternally. It will always be there and it's inside and it's when we're focused on his kingdom, not in this world. So I pray this finds you well. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.